to make a pregnant woman go in a shed? Yeah. And then what happens? She has the baby, baby. and then three very creepy shepherds come around. And what's Joseph thinking? Yeah, who are who these the guys? Who the fuck are these guys, Mary? And they're bringing bling. Right. Hey, no, no, those are the, those are the wise men. Oh. The shepherds showed up that night. Oh. The, the wise men came 11 days later. That's the that's the 12 days of Christmas. A lot of, of guys. But but what's Joseph thinking that night? First of all, first of all, it's not Joseph's kid. Yeah, and it's he knows, God's, right? Isn't it God's? Yeah, and Joseph knows, like, I've never slept with this gal. I'm just going to take it on her word. And then what happens? Three dudes show up, and they yeah. seem to know her. Doesn't Joseph kind of go, hey, Mary, so uh, who are these guys? Yeah. They seem to know you. Yeah. You're riding down the Harland Highway. All right. Yeah, I was there, but I'd already made this decision. Because, you know, when you decide I'm going to be in show business, you make this decision. Or my decision at the time was, I'm leaving this town. Did you see what you just did? What? Sorry to interrupt. That? Well, you took your hat off and then put your hands through your hair. Oh, it's wet. But there's... There's no hair back there's there. No. How dare you. Do you want some? I've got... I've got some hair oh, and Jesus. a and a hat. That'd be a little bit warm. If you want it, you just let me know. I'm not gonna wear something Nick Swartzen has on his fucking head. How much do you love Nick? I love him so much. Like really? Don't you? Well, no. You've got. I saw a twinkle in your eye. Like you, you like like take him to the movies and a, and dinner or the movies. Let's go right to it. Right to dinner. Yeah. Vacate the bowels, get ready. Yeah. Ouch. So wait a minute. Let's go back. You 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 got rid of your family. This is part of the hard podcast. This is so we're starting now. No, okay, we'll start over. Are you ready ready to start? Yeah. Can I have this up here? What? The coffee? Yeah. Is there anything in it or is that a prop? Because you actors, I just I never There's know. Something in it. Now is that well, are you fake drink? Like is that acting drinking or is there something in there? You don't know. See? This is what the actors do. And now what's this you're doing? Is this a character? This is the thing that draws my drives my my daughter Audrey bonkers. Anyway. Yeah, it also drives me and I think everyone watching bonkers. What is it? It's like you're licking the the it's underbelly of I, a Volkswagen. It's, it's as if I've got something uh in my dentures and I'm trying to get it out. That bothers Audrey to no end. That noise. It's like when Jeepers Creepers became alive after 47 years and had to feed again. It's like... <laughs> it's like you had some sandwich or pasta and you're like, oh, there's something in there. That's what 80-year-olds years old, 80 year olds do. Dude, that's not a sandwich or pasta. That's like you either ate the corpse of a baby, like a little Chinese kid, well, or an octopus. It wasn't a corpse. <laughs> Whoa, so it was a liver? I like fresh. You like it fresh. You I like guess. your you like your baby to lie. You can't even joke about that because we're in Hollywood. What do you mean? Eating a baby? I mean, what, what you Who's joking? We just drink the blood. <laughs> wow. You're just all full of mouth noises today. <laughs> Are we going to talk early about my stain? Well, your ensemble is very Vincent Van Gogh, if I may say so, and that's a compliment. What's that? I said you're you're very. What's that? Very Vincent Van Gogh. No, your other ear. Put it your is, other ear on the mic. Was it his right ear? Well, put your ear on the mic, and you'll be able. You hear me now? Uh -huh. uh, which ear did he cut off? Uh, he cut off his his the the, the uh, left ear. And because he was scorned by a woman, or did he, uh, what was it? He uh, he 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 wanted to he 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 the the the, the thing he so he, the thing he wanted. I think you're stalling for time till you come up with a joke. I, think, I really was. I think I know you. Was his brother a bigger nut job than he was? Why are we talking about this? This isn't <laughs> stuff to talk about on the highway. Well, you you came in here dressed like Vincent Van Gogh, and then you totally called me out 
I was searching for a joke and Vince, I couldn't find Vincent one, Van which Gogh, is very rare. He didn't even have pink in any. Here's the thing. <laughs> There's not a pink brush stroke in his cannon. Are you cereal? <laughs> There's no pink in any of his paintings? <laughs> oh, God. Why don't, when I come here next time, I want a God. gavel. A gavel? I'll bring my own. Like like a, a court? Why? I'll make the judgments. Wow. Clack. God. And that's... That'll be the end of it. You've changed since you become Van Gogh. What do you, what do you got there? <laughs> I, I don't know. It's this weird, like, I've never had it before. It's like some, some I kind, can't see it. Some kind of new, it's like a ginger drink. <laughs> what? God. Easy, Jeepers Creepers. God. <laughs> God, it's hot. I'm, I need to turn the air conditioner on. <laughs> Hang on. Can, I don't want you to because <laughs> if you do, all these cameras will go out. Folks, you don't know this. Twice in a row, I came up here to yeah. do this podcast, yeah. and the cameras went out. So I'm afeared that if you go <laughs> turn on the air, the cameras are just go, ah, fuck it. <laughs> I know. There's so, let me turn the air on because, see, on. you're wiping the sweat on your hair again. Because I'm drinking hot coffee. Okay, let me turn the air. Can you, can you hold down the Harlan Highway while I step away? Isn't it the super highway by now? Well, <clears throat> it's whatever you – you're yes. going to be the host for the next yes. little bit. Yes. So – Welcome. Yeah, I, I know how to say welcome. <clears throat> Folks, welcome to the Harland Superhighway. He just calls it the highway. Um, it is a road to anything in your mind. Uh, so whatever that means to you metaphorically, but it's also a real road. I can't wait till Canada names a freeway after Harland Superhighway. Hi, welcome back. Look at that. Perfect hey, timing. See now, the way we did that? And now right into the theme music. Speaking wow. of Canada, yeah. last week when we were trading back well, and forth can we let the can we let the uh, theme music play out before you talk over it so rudely? I can't hear it. Oh, you don't have these on. You don't need those. Hang on. I'm fading down. I'm fading down. And now it's gone. You missed it. You missed it, player. If you want to play, you hey. gots to play, hey. player. Did I miss it? Playa. Question. Yes. Last week or two weeks ago, and yeah. I love our text, and you know how much I love yeah. it. Um, we're trading back and forth, and I was baiting you. I was baiting you, and you knew it, maybe. What? Did, did you not notice how many times I wrote Gray J in the, uh, in the text messages? No. Do you know what a Gray J is? It's a type of bird. It's a, it's a, there's a blue J's, and there's a Gray J. Yes. Do you know what the Gray J is? It's a bird? It's the National Bird of Canada. No. Okay. Look that up. I, you don't think I did? Get your machine. <laughs> Get your computer. <coughs> I have a computer. Gray J. Gray J. Is the national <coughs> bird. Of? You're saying Canada. Yeah. But I don't know that I... Where it, are you it, from? It is possible. Canada. Is that how you say Canada? Well, how do you say it? Canada. Wow, you say it with some throat here's cancer. Say, here's how I say it. Well, oh, God. Larry, Larry lick me. Here's what I hate about Siri. Hey, Siri. Fuck off. Were you busy? Were you so busy I had to wait for you to fucking respond? Give her, oh. give her the tongue noise. One second for what? What are you working on? You jackass. Canada. Uh, uh, Whoa, bro. Me too. Me too. Me too. Easy. Me too. It's a, gir it's a girl. So what? I don't show. Hey, 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 Siri, you will never be married. No one will ever take you. On you. No, you're not. You work on it all you want, but nothing's ever going to happen for you. Hey, Siri. One, two, three. Uh huh. What's the national bird of Canada? Try again. Wow. Do you need voice lessons, guy? No, I need fucking reception up here. Well, maybe you need to take some like classes up at DeVry to learn how to speak, like a language class. or Because if Siri can't get what you're saying, I don't know who will. Well, 
T-Mobile can't because you. Well, know. welcome to Mumble Land. <laughs> hey, um, I don't have a reception. It's got SOS. I'm on literally on SOS. Oh wow! Do you have reception up here? Nosy. Who's your Who's your carrier? <laughs> My wife. Hang on. Whoa. God, dude, drop Donnie. <laughs> Hang on, let me see. So what am I asking, Siri? Uh, what's the national bird of Canada? Hey, Siri. Oh, I guess I should turn the... Hey, Siri. How come she's not... Yeah. What's your, how many bars you got? You got any signal? I don't go to bars. <laughs> Wait. This is great television. <laughs> oh, wait. I'm going to put her on a British voice. None. British. How about, how about, how about gagged? I'm doing a, I'm having her on British voice. Put her on Canadian. Okay. Creepers, creepers voice. Your series slow, man. Okay, let me just. Are you getting any reception? Yeah. Hey, Siri. I'm not sure I understand. Oh, God. She's insufferable. Siri, what's Canada's national bird? Wait. Hey, Siri. Hello. <sighs> and then what, do you just keep what's talking? Can, what's Canada's national bird? What's Canada's national bird, you idiot? <laughs> That's not very nice, what she's going to say to you. Do you hear that crow? I think it's a crow. Like, I asked technology and a real bird answered. Yeah. Did you? She's so it's a crow. I think it's Canada, Canada's bird is a crow because I heard it. I heard a real crow outside. Also known as a Canada jay, known as the gray jay, camp robber, or whiskey jack, is a p passerine bird of the family Corvade. It is found in... The no, I don't want to sign in. I didn't get that. Could you try again? It is found in the... Sorry, there's nothing to repeat. Oh, fuck you, bitch. It's whoa, found in the whoa, boreal God. forest of North America. It is the national Sorry, bird... I'm still not sure about that. Of course you're not, because you're worthless. S Siri? That's not nice. Oh, dude, you guys are in a, a fight officially. Always. You should hear my kids. They hate it when I call Siri. Dad, don't do it. <laughs> wait, wait. Hey, Siri. Uh -huh. <laughs> Siri? <laughs> she got kidnapped. I don't know where Siri is. Up yours, Siri. All right, worst premise for a movie that I can think of off the top of my head based on this. Yeah. Siri gets kidnapped, and we've got to go find her. Wow, that sounds more like an episode of Dora the Explorer. Does that sound awful that no one would want to watch? I'm writing it. Uh, but yeah, so taxi. This is an example of the trouble I have with technology. Yeah, this is very fitting because yeah. the first two times you came up here, the first time the sound and the camera didn't work. The second time you came up here, my camera worked, but yours, yours didn't. And we had a, a two burnouts, so this time I made extra s special care that everything's but, but working. But the third time it worked, right? Or no? Well, this is the third time. Is it? Gosh. Yeah. Wow. But the first two were like lemon drops. Can I just say what a great guy I am for showing up again? You are. Actually, I, purposely. I got, a, I got a coffee stain on my shirt. Oh, my, wow. My beautiful pink shirt. You know what I'll do? I'm going to flip your monitor up so you can Don't. see yourself. Can you hold the, the podcast I'm down again for I'm a minute? I'm fine. I'm fine. Just for a minute. 
Welcome back to the Harland Highway. It is the main highway to your dreams. If you want to get to where you're going, metaphorically, if you've got a goal, if you've got a hankering, what you do is get yourself on the Harland Highway. Guess what, folks? There are no exits. And the theme music again. Perfect. Dude, your timing. I mean, I almost want to see what you're like in bed. Your timing's so good. I don't sleep in a bed. I sleep on a board. What do you do? I sleep on a board of nails. Are you serious? Well, they don't stick up. They just lay on a board. Oh, wow. Remember when we were kids, that was a thing you'd see? Why? Some, some guys in India, that, that, that one of their deals is they lay on a bed of nails. Yeah. And then they'd have someone put a... a, a a bri- or, you know, one of those uh, cement blocks yeah. on their stomach, and then they'd, you know, smash it for the tourists. Yeah, or even some of them, an elephant would stand yeah. on their yeah, stomach. Yeah. 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 Gimmick. Real? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> oh, your audience is going to hate that. Yeah, it's really, it's really annoying. I said my daughter it's creepy. Audrey just. What, at what context do you do it to her? Like, are you one of those dads, she's sleeping? You'll oh, go up oh, no, beside no, no, no. her ear and go... <laughs> No, it'll be it'll be uh, various. Uh, maybe we're driving in the car, and I'll say. So anyway, what 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 classes do you have today, Audrey? And she'll like, oh, it just God. just explode. She's yeah, it almost sounds like you're doing kind of lingus on a senior. Oh, you can't say that. Well, that's what it sounds in the context like. Context of my daughter, not with your daughter, but I just know. in general for our listeners, <sighs> they're thinking it sounds like you that like you broke into a senior's home at four in the morning found the oldest lady or man in the whole place, spread-eagled them, and just... Hold on, do you have a private eye following me? Because that happened last night. Ah, who's, who's there? <laughs> <laughs> who, who is it? Junior? Is that you? Oh, Junior? Oh, oh. do it cocoon style, Junior. <laughs> <laughs> Coon style would be, I'm, I have to be under the cover. That, <laughs> well, that gets sweaty. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, now, <laughs> God. That's a good preamble. You'll cut all that shit. No, no. That's the intro, and ladies and gentlemen. That's right. Mm-hmm. Here we are on the Harlan Highway Podcast. This is the theme music for real now. Okay. Yours two didn't really count. And uh, what a special guest we have here today. Uh, David Keckner, Corky's here, and uh, it's his third time. We had technical difficulties the first two. Are you on camera? Can we just look? Is that your monitor over there? Is that you? Yeah. Is that is that is is that your monitor that is not on? Oh, the monitor. Yeah. I can see myself. But don't. Can you see yourself? Yeah, but in your business, nothing matters. It could just be, you know, camera's probably not on. Is everything working? Yeah. I was just thinking about the band I met from Canada. I really liked. Uh, what band? Uh, it escaped my mind, so I shouldn't even brought it up. Do you want to say that? Na- I didn't say the name of the Harland pod- Highway. I'm a proud member of the Harland Highway podcast, and you're listening to it. Tune in your ears. And forget your fears, because we're here to solve it. And then I just hit the theme music again as a bonus. Is What's that band? Oh, say what now? The band, uh, the song, uh, New Orleans is Sinking. Oh, you know oh, uh, Fatties in the Restaurant? No, 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 no. Uh, Great Canadian band. New Orleans, oh, oh the Tragically Hip? The tragically Hip. You like them? I, I like them, and I, I got to meet them once. No way, yeah, why? I, I, uh, we were somewhere, you know, and uh, I got to meet him. I told him I was a big fan, and there was like, how, how do you know about us? But it was, it was, it was fun. Great, great group of guys. Oh, uh, cool, man. Well, thanks for coming back, buddy. I really didn't know if you would after two, Are like, you serious? crash and burn. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. You, you know, always come back. That's well, what... Harlan, I, I said it before. I yeah. fucking adore your company. You know oh, that. Oh, thanks. I adore it. I love your Thank company. Thank you. I love it. Do you want to go for dinner every night for the rest of this week? For the rest of this week? That's what I said. How about life? 
Whoa, you're proposing? <laughs> Can you, if during dinner this happens, would you continue <laughs> or would you leave? Dude, I'm just picturing you on the fourth floor of a senior center. <laughs> like, We're all headed there. Like, dude. I want to get out of here. <laughs> Do you remember that one time we had a double date? Oh, yes. Wow. No, here's, it wasn't a double date, mm -hmm. but in your mind it was. In my mind, you just said, oh, I'm bringing a friend. No, my, my ex old lady did that. Your ex old lady. Yeah. So me and you and your ex and went the, out for, for dinner yeah, yeah, yeah. and we went to see, who was it, Roger Waters? No. Do no. a show? No. What Who's Roger the director? The, the, so, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, uh, 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 yes, um, the director. Yep, yep, yep. So so we go on this dinner, and Hairspray. we go to this nice restaurant. Director of Hairspray. Yeah. Yeah. Something Waters. John yeah. Waters. John Waters. He was doing a lecture. So, you know, intellectual business. We went, so we had dinner, and then went to see the John Waters lecture at UCLA. Yeah. Yeah. So we go to the dinner, and you set it up like, hey, let's go to the dinner and go see John Waters, and we're bringing a friend. Yeah. And I was like, great. So then I get to the dinner, and about halfway through the dinner, I start to realize you guys are sort of trying to set me up. I'm not. But you, you never, your, your ex was. I, I thought she had communicated that. I didn't. No. I, did there, I not communicate that to you? There was no communication that that's, it was like a setup for me to. That's bullshit that that happened. But I, no, it's, it, I didn't, it wasn't weird. But it got weird. Did it? Because here's the thing. I. I the, the the girl that you invited, and it's not a slant against the girl, but yeah. she was a a, a, a tiny girl. She, yeah. What she was she? Yeah. What's the term? Diminutive. Is it is it? You can't say midget. It's it's dwarf. Was she a dwarf? She was <laughs> she's sort of, short. She was five under, probably under five foot. But sort of bordering on dwarfism. Didn't have, any, didn't have any dwarfism features. I don't know if that's the right word. But she was very, very like sure. well, maybe sure. maybe an inch above dwarf. Yeah, my last girlfriend was four eleven. Really, three and a half years. Four eleven. We were together three and a half years. Oh God, you're lucky a plane didn't fly into her. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. anyways, here's the yeah. thing. So. So we had the dinner, and she was a, a marvelous girl, like nice enough, charming, good conversation, and we're sitting there, and I just thought it was a gathering. Yeah. But then I slowly started to get the hint uh -huh. that this was something more. So now we finish the dinner, and in my head, I'm like, what's going on here? We go to the John Waters thing. Ah, okay. We have to park oh, in yeah. this, like, multi-level yeah. cement parking structure. Right. So... We're getting there. I drove separately. Yep. You drove with her. You drove in a truck. Yeah. And yep. I parked. Yeah. And then I got out first. And then you guys were coming in. And someone did one of those things where they cut into your parking spot or uh. something. And and she got out of the vehicle. And it was just like, you fucking assholes. You mother, this is our fucking spot. You want to fuck with me? You fuck. Like just. She did. She yeah. went and I just went, holy fuck. Like she went from like this nice little yeah. quiet thing at dinner to. Package. Yeah. Fucking rage master. Yeah. And I was just like. Yeah. First of all, no offense, but the short girls aren't my jam. Okay. And. They're mine. <laughs> You like a short girl still covered in placenta? That's my thing, bro. Oh, just do you have a tramp tramp stamp that says Jeepers Creepers on the back? <laughs> yes, you know that. You've been back there a million times. Jump and Johnny Cakes. So, anyways, yeah. bro, I it, yeah. it just wasn't my thing. And then when that rage came out, I was like, "Holy!" Sh like I do. I, I'm just now remembering that yeah, that you bring it up. That yeah, freaked me the hell out. See, I thought that. That she, my ex had communicated all this no. information. No. Yeah, yeah, you can't leave that to Because her. if she had communicated you that, said, I would have said, well, no. tell me about her. Right. Like, of course. What the, she looked like, the, the how tall stuff. is she. The normal stuff. Right, I wouldn't yeah. want to be kind of entrapped yeah. in a yeah. in a dinner date with someone. So, of so of what, course not. It's not fair. Here's, here's the, the flattering part was uh, my ex really loved you too, mm -hmm. you know? And so I was saying, yeah. yeah. 
she was she had good intentions but yeah. what i started to wonder is what did she tell the girl i have no idea because if she didn't tell me i wonder if she told the girl that oh this guy's coming to dinner he's single and she would she would have known you too yeah through the business we're in the business so it was yeah. weird so yeah. so here's what happened next uh-huh. where it got uncomfortable t- between me and your whole family uh-huh. we're watching john waters who went on too long yeah i'm sitting there on the end it's you your ex and the girl midget minor <laughs> and, then, and then me uh-huh. and i'm going fuck this thing's gonna end in about 15 minutes and I don't want to be doing any hugging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you remember what I did? No. I leaned over with about 10 minutes to go. I was like, hey, buddy, I got, I got to go. You got a thing. And I fucked off. And I just saw your face go. And I thought, oh, man, he's pissed. Oh, he's, I was not mad. I know, but I thought you were. Oh, no. I was I was in my in my head. I was probably processing like, oh, shit. I put so hard in this situation. How, how, when am I going to apologize? How am I going to No, there was no need to apologize. It was actually kind of nice because I was single at the time. Right. And, and for someone to go out of the way and think, hey, maybe we can introduce Harlan to a girl. But that comes with so, someone having a conversation with Harlan like, yeah. hey, I got a yeah. girl for you. Yeah. No, thanks. I had no idea. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then she was pleasant enough. But when that anger thing came out like that, that that's said a, no, that's, a yeah, lot. That's, that's a, yeah, that's a deal breaker for yeah. sure. Like, no, thanks. Yeah, it was just, it was instant rage yeah. and yeah. yeah and it was like i felt like i was at a like a like a a, a, a scorpions concert in yeah. milwaukee in the yeah. parking lot plus just it way was out just of like, a, yeah it it was this just, situation did not call for that at all yeah, yeah yeah that's right yeah and and one of the issues that you have when you're dating in 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 hollywood is a lot of people already have this kind of built-in anger. Because they're not making it. The, this sure. industry causes a lot of yep. angst and anxiety. And yep. I've learned in my life, because I, I dated maybe a couple of those girls that had the flash anger. Uh-huh. And I've learned the minute I see any of that, I, I vacate. Yeah, of course. So if I'm seeing that the first two hours I've ever met her, before yeah yeah yeah, then there ain't yeah, no way uh-huh. Daddy's putting a ring on no, the gentle no, giant. Not at all. You know not what at I mean? All. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that a hundred percent. And plus, when she walked, she sounded like <laughs> <laughs> like that she placenta said, was. She sounded like she had a kind of lingle going. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, dude. I want to cut to something that yep. I know this is right up your alley. And by the way, thanks for looking out for me. I mean, the, the 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 sentiment that you were trying to, you know, get me with someone. What what's interesting is I think it might have sort of happened again. But I I wasn't I was I've never asked you, so I'll ask you now. Like like a few months later, I went to a barbecue at your house, uh-huh. and your ex actually had sort of a hot sister. Oh, uh, who was cute and thin yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. blonde and yeah, pretty attractive. Yeah, yeah. And when I went to the barbecue, she was sort of bouncing around me a bit. And I thought, oh, is this another one of these? And in my head, I was like, you know, she's not bad. That would not have but, been, that wouldn't have been, she, she would have been a regular invitee to the barbecue. And that, okay. w- and that was not communicated with me about Lee's machinations about trying to make something happen. So the sister was yeah. never. Never lined up for me, but not as far as I know. The angry, <laughs> you dodged a bullet. Anyway, <laughs> you t- <laughs> are you dating now? <laughs> Can you talk about it? Yeah, she's she's at her anger management class right now. <laughs> so Five days a week. <laughs> Yikes! Ouch! <laughs> Have you ever dated, have you ever been with like an angry girl, like someone who just could go off like in a second? You know, there's been times in my life that I had so much anger and hostility that it'd probably be uh, hard for me. Well, I guess my ex, uh, but but that type of, uh, that boiler rage that just comes out of nowhere, yeah. like you don't even hear the, the kettle on the stove going, <laughs> like it just goes, pop, pop. it pops off the top yeah. of the whole thing. Um uh, not that I can th- think of right now. No, it sucks, man. I, yeah. I, I've had a few girlfriends yeah. where, and this is why I was so in tune with this girl. Right. Like I've literally had girlfriends where I've been out to dinner, beautiful dinner, like fancy dinner. And I've had Shh. girls where it's like, it's like, Oh, look, look at this, this, this can look, look at, I like the, the greens on this can. And it went from a beautiful night to 
since when do you like green? Wow. And you're like, wait, wait, what? Right. No, really, since when do you like green? Like yeah. something that yeah. simple. Yeah. And the whole night went from a 10 to like a minus 10, and you're dealing with anger. And I, I don't know where that comes from. So I've. Well, it comes I've, from your childhood. I guess so. I don't, I don't know how to psychoanalyze it, but I just step the hell yeah. away now when hey, I see are, that. So are you dating someone now? <clears throat> are you going on dates? What's going on? Uh, well, I do go, I go on go on dates, but I don't have like a steady right so now. So you're, you're dating. So I mean, how's yeah. that working? It's weird. My guess is you're not a Tinder guy. No, no. Yeah, I mean, we can't be on Tinder. Yeah, well, I've been, I've been, I'm on a couple, I've been on a couple of dating apps. Okay, but there's very, very specific, like they're not, not just for the regular people, we're not regular. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I've, I've been on, I've been on uh, Bumble, uh -huh. and I'm on this one called Raya. Okay. But it, it's, what weird. is that? It's, the Raya is sort of like the, I hate to say it, but it's sort of like. Fuck app. No, it, it's a it's a it's a regular dating app, but it kind of it's the ten out of ten girls on there. It's like the, it's mostly like really beautiful models and you know that type of stuff. That have a lot of problems. Here's what I always say: Yeah, nothing comes for free. So if you're, yeah, that's if you're, right. If you're a ten, there's something else going on. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You and I are about as close to uh, free as it comes. Like you know. Uh, we're we're together enough, and there's you know not enough handsome. You are, but not enough handsome to have to counterbalance it. Do you ever do you remember reading the book uh, Harrison Bergeron? I think it's Vonnegut, and it's like the people that were exceptional and above and beyond talented than most of the normal people. They would have to hold. They'd be weighted down, and they also have things that they would enter that crash inside their mind. So they're as equal as everybody else. And wow. so, like that, you know, nothing comes for free. Like, you can't be exceptional in that world. It's a wow. good short story. We should make that movie. <laughs> what? Something just hit you in the eye? <laughs> it's like a dragon. It's like a dragon So you're dating. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. you ask a girl out on a date, like, what do you say? Hey, we should get together. Yeah, you just, you know, yeah, there's a million ways it can fall into your lap, yeah. you know, but it's it's just like, oh, yeah, let's meet up or let's uh, How are those something. going? Do you have dinner or just coffees? It's interesting with me uh -huh. because, you know, I'm at a stage in my life where I'm a little older. Yep. So I don't get as many offers as as I used to, right. you know, because who wants a guy at my age? <laughs> check, check this out. Guy at my age with five kids. Wow. Who's coming around? Yeah, I know. It's, Nobody. Yeah, it's weird. But the, someone will. Someone yeah, will. Yeah, but yeah. It, 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 you get into a thinner pool, yes. definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've also learned from my experience where I've seen girls who have the flash thing or you, you learn to identify red flags quicker. Yep. And so one of the issues I have now, and I try not to be judgmental, but what the problem is if I'm dating and I spot something like, you know, drinking or pills yeah. or anger yeah, yeah, or yeah, yeah. Yeah. looking at themselves in their Instagram oh. too much, taking like, if I don't, if I see things that are, are problematic, I don't give them time the way I used I to. I, I just bail because yeah. I go, whatever she's displaying to me right now is inherently oh. going to become mine and it's going to expand. Expand. Not and, only that, yeah. it's like, this is not just right now. This is going to be, that's her constant behavior. I yeah. Uh, I got hit a couple months ago by someone I had met. Yeah. And we had a flirtation. Yeah. And I was dating some of the time, and then I just left it alone, whatever. Yeah. And then that person hit me up a couple months ago. Okay. After my uh, my recent girlfriend, uh, after that yeah. ended. And I was kind of heartbroken, to be quite frank. And then uh, this girl hit me up. And okay. I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to marry this woman. You know, she's yeah. very beautiful. Yeah. And we'd, had, we'd talked before. <clears throat> never gone out we had lovely conversations yeah and then i looked at her instagram and what her interests are and i'm not interested in one thing that she likes to do oh it, no it, right, no it's fine but i'm just to me i'm like oh good i'm not gonna waste time but wait when you were talking to her at least yes because uh, because like let's say if you like making oh, model be, airplanes but she likes pressing flowers right i don't think you have to have common interests but right were the things you saw on Instagram repulsive to you? No, or no, no, they were no, just, no. Just in general, the stuff that she likes to go do and hang out and, you know, 
Did uh, you give her a chance and talk to her about it, or did you just go, no, no I'm, I'm done? No. Yeah, yeah. Because you're at an age where you didn't yeah. want to waste the time. No. You kind of knew, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm like, no, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Like, let's connect when I get back in town. Okay. No. <laughs> no. You, yeah, that's you the said I, that or she did? No, I just, I didn't say that. I In my mind, I said it. I'm like, no, nah, no, thanks. You just didn't connect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was one of the, the biggest things that you... I don't know if she watches your podcast, so I don't really want to say. Well, it's not uh, how about, mean. How about like, this? Some of the music, the concerts she'd gone to. Okay. Yeah, stuff like that, because you're going to go to concerts together if yeah. you're dating, right? Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, you, 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 you want to. You want to share that life. You want to, Look, yeah. if you have a shared interest in music, yeah. that's huge. Yeah, that's couple, true. Right? Yeah. And... Um, all of her music, I'm like, God, I'd hate to go to that concert. And what, oh, pretend wow. I liked it? Oh, yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff yeah. like that. You can't pretend because no. then when you get through that door yeah. of reality. Yeah, the next the, thing you're like, let's, hey, oh, let's go to San Francisco. They're playing there. Let's go to Sacramento. Oh, jeez. Like, no. Yeah. No, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, you're not doing that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough because once you accept another person – and by the way, we bring our crap too. Sure, sure. I don't want I don't want this to sound one sided. No, like, no. Yeah, yeah. There's probably stuff girls look at me and go, Oh, hell no. No, thanks. This right. guy does a podcast. You know? <laughs> yeah. but, He's successful. No, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but it's like it's it's really tough. So so yeah, the, I, I don't know where the dating goes, what happens, yeah. but it, you know, if I found a keeper in my mind who was a real quality yeah. Keeper, oh my God, I'd, l- I'd love to fall in love and be in love. You're talking about a laundress. A what? A laundress. What's that? A woman that does laundry. Oh, wow. A laundress. Guy makes up a word. It's a word. Is it a word? Ask Siri, but we isn't can't. It, isn't it the Canadian national bird, the it's, laundress? It's Canadian national anthem. What's wrong with you? Oh, God. Oh, laundress. laundress. Do you know the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the bird of California? Golden eagle. No, 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 no. No. Oh, shit. The, the state bird of California. It's a, it's a finch. It's, it's, it's appropriate because it's sort of, if you were to look at the entertainment world. Really? It fits. Is it a parrot? Clo- you're, you're all around it. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Oh. Racist. <laughs> Good catch. What is it? The Mockingbird. No shit, that's perfect. And the Mockingbird, what it does, it's an impersonator. What they yes. call it the Mockingbird is because it impersonates all the other birds it can hear. You are right. That is the perfect right? bird for California. It's like the Don Rick or the uh, Rich Little yes. of birds. It should be the only, it should be the bird for Los Angeles. Yeah. And did you know Rich Little was no, like, like uh, Carson got sick of him? Oh, really? I guess toward the end, because he didn't really update his act. That's what I'd read. Yeah. I, I read the Carson book. I found it fascinating. A lot of people yeah. thought it was a hit piece, and I didn't think it was a hit piece. Um, oh, wow. It, it described who the guy is. That's not the way I took it. Yeah. Uh, you know, he was, he, was a, he was a complex guy. Johnny Carson. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I, I clearly, you know, had a tough ch- It's all childhood. And I yeah. think he had a very lonely childhood, so he didn't have good attachments and relationships. And so he just kind of did what he wanted. You know, he, he kind of liked to chase some skirt, married like five times. Whatever. Yeah. And um, it was difficult for him to have real loving, caring relationships. You know, wait. It was, why'd you point to <clears throat> us? Because we have one. <clears throat> uh, but no, you, <clears throat> you're a guy. <clears throat> you know, if this is playing in a senior's home right now, like all the old ladies are getting turned on, right? They're all getting wet. <laughs> you know, that's your audience, right? Well, yeah. Mostly and you're seniors. sitting here going. You know what I love about you, though, is like what? I don't care how long it takes for us to talk or, or text or whatever. Yeah, uh, it's I, I never have a thought of like, oh, I'm why why haven't why isn't he he I, why haven't I heard from him? I'm just always delighted. You know what I mean? It's oh. just like, oh fuck yeah, Harlan. Like oh. I, you know, yeah, to, you're not a guy I ever have a a, a, a complicated thought like. What's going on? I thought this, you know, I thought this level of friendship happened or whatever. You know, it's just there, and I don't, I don't even have to consider it. Are you asking me out? Do you like rage in a parking lot? God. 
God. Yeah, I guess I am. Uh, hey, everybody. Check out my merchandise at harbling.com. Yeah, most people just slap some letters or images on a T-shirt or a hoodie, but not me. Yours truly. Guess what? I draw my own designs at harbling.com. You can see tons of my hand-drawn T-shirts. Uh, you can either buy the original or you can buy a print and uh, man, oh man, wear them loud and proud. Um, I love making these designs for you guys and uh, keeping it personal. So check out the whole uh, catalog. We got hoodies, we got coffee mugs, we got uh, t-shirts, you name it. It's there at harbling.com. Get your uh, Harland original design, wearable art at harbling.com today. And uh, thank you for your support. And I'll just keep the uh, the groovy images coming. Um, let's skip to uh, something. I, I, something. I don't know what to say. That, so, thank you for the compliment, what do you buddy. Mean? No, what do you mean? I mean, like, uh, I, I just, yeah, you're an, uh, a friend that I don't even have to uh, think. Uh, where are Harlan and I? Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, because we're always right there, right there, or just yeah. right there. And yeah, it's just I just I, I love it every fucking time I see you. God, I mean cool. it's just it's just a delight. And when you know you'll text out of the blue, yeah, I'm like fuck yeah, good day, yeah, yeah. Audrey will never listen to this podcast because of the noises. Anyway, you, your daughter? Got, yeah, you've got a whole. She's senior this year. That's tough, man. Come she's on. an old lady. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> quickest in the business her and sergeant are seniors in high school and that's kid three and four wow. and i gotta tell you it's that first time you're like oh shoot they're going yeah they're leaving the nest they're leaving. are you sad yeah so yeah, you, yeah. Had, you had five kids yeah, yeah god yeah. what do your stretch marks look like <laughs> uh but the older two live in town and they've always said they don't want to leave L.A., and that makes me so happy. What? Wouldn't you want them to get out of L.A.? It's so uh, creepy here. No, well, it's expensive. But the thing I love about it is yeah. they don't want to get move away from their parents. Oh, That's really? That's huge. Yeah. That's huge. Does it hurt that the other ones left? Oh, no, no. The other ones are going to college next year. Oh, okay. But I assume they're going to come back. Now, Audrey, the other day, she, she'd always... When we'd go back and visit the Midwest where I'm from, yeah. she'd say, I want to live here. And I, I, would, I, always, I would never say, no, you don't. Yeah. I'd be like, huh, maybe I'll get one that really has this Jones for the Midwest. Yeah. And I didn't, you know, like I had to get out. Which I, is weird because you're from the Midwest. Yeah, yeah, but I, I knew that I needed to, I had to live in a city because yeah. you know, I'm from a very small town. Yeah. And my, my, my yearning was like, I got to get somewhere big, somewhere exciting. What was the pop of your small town? Oh, it was uh, 1999 for most of my life. Come on. I swear to God. So it was like a main street, general store, yeah. mail, post yeah. office. No, not one, not one stoplight. Wow. Yeah, no movie theater, not one franchise, not, none of your... Where did uh, you live, the Dominican Republic? Yeah. But at least that's the good side of the island. It's not Haiti. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I just knew, I knew at 10 years old, I'm leaving. You're getting out. Yeah. And so I did. And then, uh, you know, that small time, time town life is great for some people. They really dig it. They did the, the speed. They like the security of it. Uh, just, you know, knowing everybody and just kind of settling and have that life. It just wasn't for me. Did you resent it? Were you sort of angry? I at was. Being, did you, did yeah. you feel trapped? Yeah. Oh yeah. Very much so. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I but like there's a ch do you admit there's a charm to small towns, or could you not see it because you were sort of, you had the blinders on and were looking at the bright lights? I had the blinders off. <laughs> <laughs> no, it just wasn't for me. So I don't want to qualify it for anybody else. Yeah. But nothing about it said, uh, yeah, this place. So you were kicking around, and yep. as a kid, you, Ten years mu old. you must have had to look around and go, okay, here's my options. Farmer, general store worker, gas station pump guy. Like, what, what were you thinking? There was if never you one. My father had a manufacturing plant that I worked at since I was seven years old. 
child he was, labor. Or, yeah. yeah, it's true. Wow. It's true. Illegal. So, I mean, Illegal. not only that, yeah. but <clears throat> look, I'm not staying here. I all I knew when I was ten, I knew this. I have to live in a city. Yeah, yeah. But with your eyes on entertainment, or were you just not like, to, I don't care if I work at a car dealership. I just no, got to be in the city. Not I was thirteen. At thirteen, I started watching Saturday Night Live, and I was like, I'm going to be on that show. And you were. Yep. Wow. Kind of crazy. Sort of a visionary. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. And that's even more um, astute of you because now you're saying this from a position where the odds, it's not like you were saying this from Detroit or Buffalo or Miami where maybe you could go to an acting school and maybe you could find an agent. You're, say, you're saying this from a town surrounded by corn yep. and Stephen King characters <laughs> and like <laughs> less even, than 2,000 other human beings. Not even someone interesting enough to be, make it into a Stephen King novel. Wow. And yeah. so you, the, the odds go way down for you to get out and become... Can I tell you something? Well, I'd rather you didn't. All right. But go ahead. I don't think about odds. There are no odds. There's a decision. There's a decision. Yeah. <laughs> All you make is a decision. I try to tell this to my kids. Okay. You Pretend I'm a... one of your kids. Huh? And tell me. Charlie. Okay, yeah. I'm Charlie. Go ahead. Tell me about the odds. Here's the most important thing. Yes, Daddy. Find the thing you love. Yes, Daddy. And you make your decision that you're gonna you're gonna succeed in that thing you love. That's it. And because the word decide means to cut off from all other possibilities. So that's all there is to it. You make a simple decision. Go do that thing, and that's it. You're pretty deep for a child of the corn. What's that? Was that a gray jay? It's a children of the corn theme. You don't re realize it? It is? Yes. No. <laughs> um, but that's the thing. Here's the thing. I'll tell you, and I don't know why it happened to me, Yeah. but it did. I had a very clear understanding of what I was going to do, and it was going to work. And I yeah. never had one doubt. I don't know why. Interesting. It has, has I, nothing to do with arrogance. I was 13. I was standing by the tree in yeah. my backyard looking at the sunset there in the west. Wow. And I thought to myself, I destiny, I'm going to go and do this thing. I really, really did. I remember that moment. You know what's interesting, and I'm not even joking, you're preaching to the choir. I had the exact same feeling. Yeah. I, I was up there in Canada yeah. where... Back when I was a kid in the 70s, the odds of getting into the States, I might as oh. well have been in a small town. Oh, it was very to... hard to make that uh -huh. leap and get your way into this. It still is, sort of, uh -huh. you know? Yeah. And I had the exact same thing that you just shared. It was it was a feeling. It was a spirit inside where I just It was a knowing. Went, it was a knowing. And yep. I was never afraid. I was never... I knew it was going to be work. I knew it was going to be a journey, but... I, I saw the writing on the wall. I told my buddies in college, I said, I'm going to be on Letterman one day. And they were like, what the hell are you? I said, I don't know how. I don't know why. I'm going to be on Letterman. And yep. 10 years later, yep. I was. Yep. yep. We, we shared the exact. Yep. It, it, it's fascinating. Now, it's the difference is you yeah. told people, because you're in college, probably in a metropolitan area, right? Right. I'm in Tipton. You don't tell people. Right, you right. Don't, you don't tell small town people your dreams. Well, here's the other thing, though. The only thing I said is I said I'm going to be on Letterman. But what I never told anyone because I felt, have you ever had that moment when you feel like if you tell something you're creating, like you're writing a book or you're doing a bid or you have an idea, you feel like if you tell people before you create it, it loses some of its energy. Yes, there, <clears throat> there's two schools of thought on that. Okay. One is tell people your plan because yeah. then they're going to hold you to it, right? The other is don't tell people your plans. Right. Just go do them. Well, that's <clears throat> where I was at. I, I never, to, I, I told people I was going to be on Letterman, but I never told them the bigger picture where in my head, I was like, I'm going to be in movies. I'm going to be on TV. I'm going to do, do stand-up comedy. So I knew what kind of was cooking inside me, yeah. but I never released that part of it. Yeah, I don't think you can. That, yeah. that thing of like, I'm going to have a successful entertainment career. Yeah, yeah. but it, it wasn't even about being successful. It was about the spirit of it. It's like I didn't want to 100%. let any of the magic out of the box because I felt it would have kind of just diluted what what was there you that's know that's a different gear yeah the different gear is it has to have some megalomania in it i do believe explain that it, word because to me that's a dinosaur what's megalomania oh well it's beyond ego 
Like it's, it's oh good it's, okay. It's, it's, it's a hyperdrive. Good because the worst part about talking about this is you you don't want to come off as egocentric, right? If people don't understand it, but it, it's right. just a feeling. So right. good, I'm glad you so, said that. But the 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 like you and I are driven to a point like we're very happy, you know, and but the, that other gear of going, I must summit. Yeah, I have to be at the top of the mountain. I've got to be a star. That's a different gear. Yeah, and I don't. <clears throat> I'm not necessarily interested in that. If it happened naturally, I'd right. be fine with it. Yeah. But that takes so much. And look, I have five kids, and that's a reality. Yeah. So that's not going to happen because you have to make too much sacrifice for that to happen. You have to pretty much just, you know, put them on a, a, in a, a side thing. Yeah. And you're just not going to attend to that. But, you know. Uh, but I, I came from a point where... The the key was to get into the slipstream. Yeah. That was the yeah. big jump. To know you you could get into the slipstream of what this spirit was telling you. Spirit is a great word, yes. And then you have a shot at getting to that yes. giant spot. And you have joy in it because you're yeah. doing it. Right. You know, the thing that we can do is I always say this. As comics, look, I, I, I you know, we're actors, yes, but we're comic actors, right? Yeah. There's a thing we, that we're able to do, and God, God bless us, right? You and I can walk on stage and prove it right now. Boom. There's yeah. the result. Oh, he's funny. Yeah. Okay? Now, how about an actor? How do, how, how do you know? How do right. you know? Yeah. Like, why is that one good or that one good or that one yeah. good? That, he's, that one's got the looks or this or this or that. But, you know, how many people have such short careers and all that stuff? Yeah. You know, but in comedy, you know, everyone's like, I, I never even think, like, comedy's hard. No, it's yeah. not. You well, know? that's what I always say. People, you, you always see these actors, like big actors, like Meryl Streep, and and the real serious actors. They go, "Oh, comedy's the hardest thing." Okay. And as a comedian, yeah. I go, "No, it's not." Right. Somebody, I can do that with my eyes. If someone yes. give me a dramatic role, that's the hardest right. thing to me. Right. Well, the hard thing us is for us to redirect um, our natural instinct to to uh, uh, put it, pour it into the script. Yeah. Right. right. Because. You and I have put in so much time yeah. uh, uh, working our craft, right? Yeah. It's just there. Yeah. It's, it's, it's sometimes to an annoyance where I'm, I'm doing it all the time yeah. for all people. That's Everyone's just an audience, right? There was right. a time in my life that that was way too much. Yeah. But it's, it's kind of like that's, that, it's, that, it's a joyful thing for us. Yeah. Now, you would have to refocus what you're doing and plow it into the script. You have, you have to outwork everybody yeah. to be a great actor. That's all there is to it. Yeah. You have to be elite if yeah. you're doing drama. It's yeah, elite. Yeah. Yeah. You know, either you've done that time as a young person and you put in all those hours on stage and it's there. Because I'll just say this. You pick up a script, and we talked about this last time about having good auditions and bad ones. Yeah. But now you and I pick up a script and like, oh, I know how I'm going to make that funny. Yeah, yeah. I know exactly how I'm going to do that. Now, we might read it again and again and again, but it's probably going to come back to our first three choices we had in the first place, yeah. correct? Yeah, a lot of times it's actually that first choice, yes. which is weird. Yes. You know what Del Close said? Who? Was Who? The, Del Close was, a, was the, the improv guru in Chicago, one of the most important uh, comedy acting teachers uh, of the century. Okay, the Del century. Close. Del Close. He said, <clears throat> you'll always have three thoughts. And if the uh, when it comes to a comedy thing, and it happens that quickly on stage, right? Was he gay? No. <laughs> well, you were doing. You have three thoughts. But if it comes back to the first one, that was the right one anyway. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. like you said, typically it is. But sometimes that third thought, we're like, oh shit, that's even better than the first one because yeah. it built on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But those three thoughts are usually come right away. Like you put three bullets in that gun and like, <laughs> yeah, first one. Yeah, yeah. It, it's interesting though, because sometimes I will rewrite something or I'll, I'll, uh, I'll react something, and then somehow it always comes back to that yeah. very first trigger impulse. Yes, and it, it's a lot of. I'd say eighty percent of the time, it's the yeah. one. Yes, and now the uh, in stand up, the difference is the editing to get to that one. Piece. Yeah. I will talk too much to get to that piece. Yeah, but it's hilarious. I know, but if you get to two words to get there. I know, but watching you get there is half the fun of watching really? you. Oh, yeah, because you're just up there and you 
Because you that you said it a minute ago, you know you're funny. Uh-huh. So what's hilarious is to watch you meander around and try to find that because you know the payoff's going to be funny. Is that right? Oh, for me, <coughs> I love it. Yeah. I'll sit back there and it's like, <laughs> I'll just see you like going and going. But then when you get but to that, it, that's it I love you it. you know me and you're like, oh shit, he doesn't, he can't find the exit. Yeah, but no, oh, people know. People he's, on the, know. he's on the right highway. People oh, know. Oh, he's going to find the exit. It's great, but apparently though. he had to build it. It's worth the wait. It's worth the wait. Okay, that's very that's very very nice to hear. That yeah, makes a it's, big difference. It's beautiful. For me. Yeah, but yeah. going back to, uh, I want to touch on one last thing about that thing where you said you knew. Yeah. When you were was it thirteen? You said yes. So and I had a similar vibe when I was around that age right. too. No, where were you? Do you remember what happened? Like, like what it was? Now here's the thing. Yeah. I, would, I hate to interrupt you. No, no worries. In watching Saturday Night Live. Yeah. I had that feeling like I'm going to be on that show. Yeah. But then that moment I made my decision was by myself in the backyard looking at a sunset Mm. and standing against a tree and looking out. And I know where it is, you know, my backyard. That's And looking out and knowing I'm going to go do it. Yeah, it's, I, I, there's something interesting about the nature aspect of that. You know, you yeah. weren't, you weren't in a building, you weren't influenced by any media or other people. You, you were connected to the sun and the tree and the earth. Interesting, so, yeah. So, and when we go back to the talking about spirit, yeah, I always believe that bringing God into it, God and whatever you believe in right. spiritually right. flows through nature. So, yeah. that was a strong moment for you. Um, my moment was, I think there was two. I used to stand in front of the mirror when my parents would go out and I'd put the radio on and I'd, I'd dance around to songs and I'd look at myself in the mirror and make crazy fists, almost Jim Carrey-esque, yeah. you know, before I even knew Jim existed. Yeah. And I just went, why am I doing this? But I love it. Yeah. And I think it's, I think I'm sort of doing something here. I felt like at that point, while well, I was born to entertain. Uh-huh. But then when I was in high school, I started skipping classes and I'd go downtown in Toronto and go to movies in the in afternoon. In high school, you'd skip. In high school, and I'd sit alone and watch movies, yeah. and I'd just sit there, and I'd be like, I don't know where it came from. It's like when you were looking into the sun, I was, and i go, I'm going to be on that screen one day. Not being cocky. No, no, not no, being, no, no. I didn't no. even know how to act, but it I just a- went, there's a voice inside me going, I'm going to be up there one day. And it, he, this is the question I was leading to. Yeah. Saying what we both said about this vibe, in retrospect now, and even when you were going through it, was was there ever a sort of a weird confusion as to why me, where the hell is this coming from, what is it, and why is it happening to me? No. Really? No, I never looked at it that way. Never I, confused? I, nope, nope, nope. I just made that decision, and I knew it was the right one, and I never had a single doubt. But I guess what I'm saying is you made that decision based on feelings that yeah, came I, sort I of out so. of nowhere. I, I, Have I, you ever been confused as to where the genesis of those feelings, the seed came from? No, I never I never needed to look at it. Yeah. And uh, um, I, I will say this. It was uh, not a feeling. Yeah. It was so, you know, corny or not, when people say you, you, you find your calling. Yeah, yeah. It was like that. Yeah, yeah. Destiny. And it was it was that. Yeah. And it, w- it was just, like I had to say, it was a knowing. It wasn't a voice. Yeah. It was just a complete, um, almost cellular understanding Amazing. of that's yeah. what's going to happen. Yeah, and, and I felt that too, but there are days when I, when I go deep into it and, now and analyze it, I go, I go why though? Why, why didn't... Why didn't my fiber say you're going to be a, a plumber or, or no, an airline cause, pilot? Because it wasn't there. You weren't interested. Right. It had to be this way. Yeah. Now, the only thing that's different as you get deeper into it, yeah. you had to continue to make uh, goal decisions. Because part of me always believed, well, it's all going to just come to me anyway. Yeah. And um, probably because of, you know, my last 25 years of my life was devoted to a family relationship. Yeah. So that shuts down a lot of possibilities. Yeah. And you have to tend to, I have to make choices that allow me to be in close proximity to these things that I've created. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, but then you still, you do have to make very specific decisions about what's next. Because we can work, right? Yeah. You and I are fortunate that we can go on the road and clubs will book us. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But then what? 
you know, because there, there's what's the sustainability for me? Like there's a point where I've still got three kids to put through college Whoa! and it gets more expensive every year. Have you thought about just throwing them into DeVry? You know, I have, well, that's a lot cheaper. Well, probably a calling. Third. I tell them they're calling. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's the, the, the funny thing is I just assumed everybody at 10 years old had a kind of thing like, oh, I know what I'm going to do. Yeah. And by the time they were 13, it was dead set. Wow. I just assumed yeah. everybody was like that. Like their software built in like, yeah. here we go. And apparently that's not the it case. It makes me wonder what portion of the population does experience that. Because <clears throat> I've met a lot of people in my life who seem aimless and kind of just fell into something and and just kind of got in the river and drifted. And I don't want to say that we're privileged or lucky, and I don't want to assume that most people d lack direction, but it makes me wonder, and it also makes me realize that to a degree we're sort of blessed and lucky that we did have that calling because it took a lot of angst and anxiety out of looking for something because you kind of knew the path. Can I just say I feel the same way? There was no angst or anxiety, was there? None, none. And it goes back to I, my word is knowing. Yeah. And there's no anxiety about it. It's not even that's not even that's not even on the math. That's not a part of your calculus or the uh, the algebra. Anxiety yeah. is, doesn't even play into it. Yeah. Right. It's like no. This is the road I'm going. Yeah. That's it. But that's what I mean. I some days I get mystified. How did we get that? How did how I, did that come I, to I, us? It, well, no, I it, think the best weird. thing is it's a blessing because it, it, it was is. a clear calling. Yeah. And again, this is not ego. No, it's, it was just an understanding. Yeah. This is what I have to yeah. do. Yeah. And I don't have a choice. Now yeah. the, the the bonus is we love it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's the bonus. Yeah. Um. But I I, I will say too, the, just the joy of doing it. Yeah. Is what I love. And I think the residual joy of doing it is that you you spread that joy to the people who receive it, right. which is the second half of that circle, I believe. Right. You that's know? that's our service. Yeah. Now I don't, <clears throat> I don't, because there's a, there's a little a bit of a, a, a slip on one line or the other, like oh I'm I'm of service. Yeah. Because that means I'm uh, somehow putting my ego in it. Yeah. And. Um, what, what I'll understand, <clears throat> you know, is when people come up to us. Yeah, yeah. And tell us how we've gotten them through hard times. Right. Right? Yeah. And then you realize <clears throat> how blessed I am to do this. Yeah. I don't know where this is coming you're from. You're getting emotional. I am. <clears throat> but I can't but, tell if you're acting or no, not. I'm not. But, well. <laughs> but you know, because I... I Part of me feels like it's egotistical for me to go out like I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go be of service. Now, if it was pure, yeah, and I said I'm gonna go be of service, then who knows? You might have the greatest show of your life. Yeah, yeah. Rather than there's part of us when we're on stage goes I'm gonna do these fractions and this one, and I know that's gonna get a laugh. Yeah, right? <clears throat> and it's it's not about ego; it's about successfully doing our job. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. yeah. But I just, it just occurred to me, like, what if I really said, I'm going to go be of service? That might take ego completely out of it. <laughs> but do you understand what I'm saying? Hold right? on. This might have been one of the best performances I've... <laughs> had to, but do you understand what my point is? Do you know what I mean? Because it's... it's, it's you can go out there yeah. with ego and go, I'm going to crush. Yeah. That's me doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I go out there and my intention is I have this body of work that so far has proved to be marginally successful. Yeah. But if my intention is to go be of service, right? Because the audacity that you and I are able to go out and stand in front of 300 people yeah. who've come to see us. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You can't let that out of your mind. Like, I'm so blessed. Someone <clears throat> made me their knight. Yeah. That is such a fucking compliment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we do owe them, yeah. right? Yeah. So I'm just thinking of this stuff while we're talking right now. Yeah, but, no, it's great. You know, yeah, to be of service to the thing 
And that's I don't like that word service though, because we're we're artists, and what we right. deliver is art and service. To me, I know what you're saying with service; it's too technical. Okay, then so then, um, another because service to me implies, you know, we're servicing. We're like a guy coming to fix the air conditioner. Okay. We're servicemen. Then I'll, I'll give you a but better, the, a different <clears throat> word with the same implication. I'll, service I'll, is rubbing me the wrong way, guy. And I'll well, knock I'll, it off. I'll, I'll tell you the you know this I'm is an, me acting like you know I'm mad. an alcoholic. Right, you I, are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in alcohol, in, in in AA. I by the way, I did not know that. Really? Yeah, I never knew oh, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, it, I wish but, I knew. <laughs> but would have gone out drinking with you. <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> um, you have to do acts of service. Okay. For others. So that's coming from right. that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's not for me. This is not about me. I'm doing an act of service for others. Okay, right? but that's that's mm. working on you. But as far as your comedy and your craft take the word service out let's find a better word uh change the oil <laughs> better if you got food in your mouth well let's not get too sick i don't think the old ladies would like that oh god they love me what's that smell of lasagna <laughs> Oh, the, the good pasta God. would swim in there for a minute. Wow! Just don't, just don't chew it. Olive Re- Garden put, lingus. Put, put, put some pasta in there and just let it let it slowly oh, disintegrate. God. Refuse to Sh- chew it. Jeepers creepers, a, a lingus. Big flat noodle. Just. Oh. <laughs> God. But do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. To be of service to other human beings. Yes, yes. Not not like it changing the oil. Yeah, I like know. Like, I'm going to go serve this, you know, to be of service to other humans. Yes. Right? Yeah. No, yeah. I get it. And, yeah. I, you, you, you know, it might be the right word, but it's just for some reason. No, I, 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 I always <coughs> hate, I always hate, and you can see, I'm, I hate putting anything too technical I onto art. Sure, sure. Because oh, yeah. to me, art is free. And so when I hear right. service, it's too containing. Right. So, but, oh, you, but that's sir, just me. I understand. Art, yeah. art, art for you is organic. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's, you yes. can't have restraints. And saying, service feels I, too regimented. Okay. It, it, okay. So, so knock so. it off, damn it. <laughs> to be of, to give of yourself to others. Yeah. And that's part of To what give. Maybe yeah, that's yeah, yeah. the word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but I mean, you know, because a lot of times I do find this when we're going on stage. Sometimes we're doing the same. If you're doing a long run, if you're doing eight weeks in a row every yeah. weekend, it can get a bit, you know, of a grind. Yeah, yeah. Because you're doing the same hour. Oh, the yours, yours is pretty free, free form, right? Yeah. Do you have? Do you even have a running order? Uh, I like to switch it up all yeah. the time so that I, I've learned to do that so I don't run into that kind yeah, of that's good. road yeah. re- weary kind You've of. You've got so much play yeah. in your show. It's just fucking so fun. <laughs> and I'll, I'll, I'll change it up from show to show. Like yeah. I'll do a show one way and go, I don't want to repeat that. Yeah. So I'll go up the next show. Yeah. And I find that if I alter it, if I change yeah. the path, it it. It's so rejuvenating for me. Yeah. So so it's almost like a dancer doing a dance routine, but then the next show changing find, the yeah. dance routine. I steal from you every once in a while. Just Fine, just, in, just in a right. word like, sir, sir, am I, sir, can you, sir? But I'll never go into like a second part of your bit. Well, you know? that's going to be, I think you owe me about $80. 25 cents. <laughs> but I know sometimes it's accidental. You know, like, wait, why, why do I know that? And why is that fun for me? Like, oh, fuck, that's Harlan's. What am I doing? Not a whole You're bit. like the mockingbird. Not you're a, you're stealing you my bit. Not a whole bit. No, I know. But, you know, just that thing. Of, By the way, sir, if you did it, I'd be honored, to yeah. be honest. Yeah, yeah. I've seen people <clears throat> sort of imitate me or rip me off over the years, and there's people where I go, fuck you, and then, so, you know, so, if there's someone else, like, mimicked me i'd be like honored it'd be right like, so right 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 with you it's <laughs> unless they got more successful yeah, yeah 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 <clears throat> but um well w- speaking of g- the craft and doing movies we finally did a movie together this year yes and we saw each other for five minutes we saw each other, so as i was finishing and by the way it's it's the new movie half baked Two, the we, sequel yeah. to half baked we have no idea when it's coming out unless yeah. they told you something yeah no i don't we don't know yeah. when it's <laughs> <laughs> when it's coming out, but we shot it down in uh, ba- Baton Rouge. Yeah, Baton Rouge, red, Louisiana. Red stick. And so I did my stuff, and then the day I had to leave, 
I came you in. were coming in, yeah. and we literally saw each other on the way to the makeup yeah. trailer for yeah. what ten minutes. Ten minutes, yeah. I but, know. It, but at least we're documented in the same yes. movie, right? That's the second time. Wait, what was the other one? Oh, oh, geez, yeah, the one where we met. De- WTG? Yeah, wag D. the dog. Yeah, WTD. Yeah. By wag the, the dog. way, I I be, I watched it recently. You again. did? Yeah, because remember this yeah. reporter came right. and right. did a story that was right. like the twentieth anniversary. I know, and you and I were quoting it. It was like we're, we're yeah. working for the day. We were like talking yeah. extras. Yeah. You know what it was? A lot of people probably wouldn't talk to him for the interview. He couldn't get to yeah. the because it was so loaded with big stars. Yeah. De Niro. Oh God, let me turn that. Time's off. over. Oh, hang on. Time's up. Up. Hang on. Big one? Hang on. Get a big fish? Yeah. Shh. Yeah, no, he didn't mean it, Siri. <laughs> you just shushed no, me. He, no, he, I know he called you a bitch. Worse than yeah. that in my mind. No, he's really a good guy. <laughs> yeah, he's he was servicing you. Yeah. <laughs> you tell him what? Okay, are you sure? Okay. Uh <laughs> Here's what I say back to her. Hang on. Gray J. Uh, he says Gray J. Look it up. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll tell him. <laughs> she get weird? What? Uh, this isn't me. This is I her. I hear it. Uh, you got uh, a day and four hours to live. It's too much. Well, that's her, not me. Well, guess what? I'm going to cut that short. She won't win. Cut that short, huh? Uh-huh. Reminds I, me of a date I went on one night. Short for two reasons. You left early and it was short. Ouch! So, yes. So we do half-baked two, and yep. here's the thing. I, we, we saw each other for so little, we immediately just said hi and joked around. I don't even know what your role was. What was your role in Half Baked Two? Uh, I am a dispensary owner that's somewhat of a uh, gangster, and I also sell drugs that I'm not supposed to be selling. And then I, I'm after these other guys who are horny in on my territory. Oh wow! Okay, yeah. Yeah. nice. I play like the, the 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 high school coach. Yeah. And don't you turn into a big spleef? I, I turn into yeah. a giant reefer. Yeah, yeah, they have yeah. me in this giant yeah, reefer in, in with, the, a, in, with the, just the face. In their vision, right? Yeah. 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 While they're getting high. Yeah. Did yeah. you like it? Was it a good experience, that movie? Oh, good experience. I have no yeah. idea what the movie's going to be like. But yeah, yeah. it's fun. I'd worked with the director before, cool guy. Yeah. And everybody on set was cool. I liked everybody. Yeah, the, the, the new, the, just so people know, that the new Half-Baked Part 2 doesn't have Jim Brewer and Dave Chappelle. It has t- another Dave. Yeah, I came in and did a cameo. because yeah, you were in the first one. I was in the first one. And Rachel True, who played Mary yep. Jane yep. in the first one, she's back. In a, it's, in a, it's her son. Yeah. yeah. And so the new kids that are playing the half-baked kids, I want to say they're actually really good Very and good. really funny. So Very I'm good. excited to see it. Yeah. I wasn't sure how they'd be, but when I went in and did ADR, some of the voiceover stuff. Oh, yeah, me too. It looked really great. I was like, these kids these kids yeah. got it. Like They're they really good, good actors. Yeah. So. I didn't see the whole movie yet, but yeah. what I saw looked promising. Yeah, it'll be fun. Okay. Yeah. Well, as yeah, long yeah. as you're in it, it'll yeah. be fun. Right. Did you just wink at me? I did. Could you do it? Could, uh, just, if you wouldn't mind winking and following it up with the Jeepers Creepers saliva. <laughs> Ridiculous. <coughs> Yes, where were we? No, I'm just going <laughs> to let it hang for a minute, bro. Just be in the moment here for a second. Yeah. I'm being of service to you. <laughs> Drives Audrey bonkers. Uh, oh, my God. We've been talking way longer than I, I didn't, long, I didn't get to. It? I didn't get to one of my questions you for you. Cut all this other shit. What are your questions? You want to do a rapid fire? Um, we'll do a okay, yeah. want to do it? Yeah, yeah. Rapid Why fire. did Steve Carell quit the office? Was it to do movies? Uh, I think he wanted to spend more time with his family. Oh, yeah. good. So yeah. it wasn't one no, of these no, things no, where, no, oh, no, good. No, I'm no, so not, happy no. to hear yeah. that. Yeah. He wanted to spend more time. Although with his I'm family. still bummed he yeah. he quit. Uh, but it, it's yeah. a 12 hour day minimum. 
Oh, yeah. yeah, he, yeah. The, the yeah, work yeah. he put People in. Know, a, a TV job is yeah. 12 hours, so 6 to 6 or 6 uh, to later. So yeah. he wanted to spend more time with his family. And he okay. had to carry that show. He's the best. He's, oh, I mean, Corell is Corell's another gear. He, he's, he's freaking amazing. He's just amazing. Yeah. And I always tell people he's as good a person as you hope and better. Oh, that's yeah. great. Well, what, what bummed me out is that as, you know, I, 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 he did a few movies that I thought were good. Most of them I thought weren't as good as The Office. Uh-huh. That's why I'm bummed. Uh-huh. I feel like The Office was his the leading role of his career. Uh-huh. And when he left like with a season or two to go, I was like, ah, but I'm glad it wasn't. Yeah. He pulled one of those stupid, well, I'm going to go do movies now. It no, was, that, it was I, for I, family. I really don't think there was an ego about it or pursuing another level of show business. Um, Steve, you remember, has three, four very huge movies. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, the, the, the animated ones. 40-year-old version. No, the animated ones. Have been the biggest, probably. Uh, oh, oh, the Despicable yeah, Me. There's three of those, and then the Minions. Oh, he's in those no, too. No, he's an executive producer on oh, Despicable, God. so that's part of his. Oh wow! Thing too. So that he's I mean, th- th- yeah. that piece of business is done well for him, wow. and it gives him the opportunity in life to explore all kinds of different projects that he wants to do. Yeah, he well, can, he has a production company. Yep. I've, I've submitted shows to his production. I've met yeah. with his production yeah. company. They're good people. Great guy. Yeah. He can make choices. He can spend more time with his family. Loves his wife, who's a lovely human being. Yeah. He's a loving man. He's a great dude. Oh, that's good. And it, it really, he does want to do good work. He always has. Yeah. When I was at Second City, yeah. Steve Carell was a guy who, when he's on stage, it never fails. Now. After every set at Second City, yeah. they do an improv set for about a half an hour, 20 minutes. Yeah. I have never once seen Steve Carell fail on stage. Look, a lot of guys will have varying degrees of success. Yeah. I, 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 I have a nice batting average, but sometimes you just take a dirt. Yeah. Not once with Steve Carell. There's no failure. Yeah. He is just... A machine. It's amazing. Good to hear it. Okay, next, uh, next we're, question. We're, we're yeah, our speed okay. round. Hey, bossy. Um, do you have a camping story? Anything funny? Yeah, when I was a kid, we used to go. There we go. Uh, that was to, fast. We used to go. There was a, there was a, someone's farm about two miles out of town, maybe three, and yeah. we'd hike out there. Of course, you know, yeah. Like to, imagine asking your kids to walk three miles now. Not now. We'd, we'd hike out have there. A seizure. We'd, we'd camp. Yeah, and um, we were trying to get some more wood. And this is how dumb we were in sixth grade. There's this big trunk of a log, right? Yeah. And we, there's a place we called the falls because that is five foot waterfall okay. of the stream. Yeah. So I decided to ro- ride this. I was going to ride this log across the stream, get it out for wood. Like that's the dumbest thing. Like, sure, nothing better for a fire than wet, wet wood. wood. Yeah. And I got on it, and it immediately rolled over. <laughs> yeah. And did you almost drown? And no, no, no. It wasn't that deep, but it was very cold and like, oh, that was dumb. You know, yeah. that reminds me of when I, when I used to work up north, I used to do log rolling. Oh, we'd, you did? We'd get on, we'd get on the logs. You out, could do out it. On the lake. Oh, yeah. Wow. We'd, get in the, we'd get on the giant pine log. We'd cut down a huge, and then we'd have two or three, sometimes four guys on the log. And, four guys on the same and you're, log. You're spinning. Oh, huge tree. Yeah. And wow. we'd spin on it, and then you'd, you'd kick water in the other guy. You got so good on it, you could take one leg and kick water in the other guy's face to try and knock him off. And but, that's cold water. Well, it was a lake, so it wasn't that bad. Okay. Yeah. I once did this music video, and it was not uh, it was not a union video. This is years ago. Oh, boy. Here and, we go. Uh, yeah. It was years ago. And one of the things was they had to have a, a girl who's going to be a log spinner. And it was somewhere up north, and it was very cold. Yeah. And so she fell in once or twice. They didn't have a warming tent or a blanket, and I stopped it. Because she was fucking freezing. Whoa. I said, we're done. She's not doing anymore. Yeah. And they were very mad at me. Wow. They're like, you're done. You're done. You made yeah. no fucking preparation. Yeah. You didn't know what you're doing. This is worse than an amateur production. Yeah. You're done. She's yeah. done. She's not She's not doing it again. Yeah. Because yeah. I could see she was getting hyperthermia. And they didn't, yeah. they didn't they give didn't a care. fuck. Yeah. Good plus, for you. I, I helped carry the fucking log down. Like, you guys don't have a crew? I could fucking injure myself for life. But I'm a, I'm a player, man. Yeah. That, so, whatever. And then next question. No, that anger popped right out there, didn't it? Yeah. How tall are you? Uh, six two. Okay. Actually, six one and a half now. I've shrunk. Yeah. Yeah. Thought so. <coughs> Talking about my cock. 
Uh, we're going to do our final thing, buddy. You remember this. We I do. do it every time. We didn't get all to all the questions, but that's fine. Well, the, we, we've ran so long. Okay. I mean, that whole crying thing you did. Three hours. Here we go. This is words from a wooden shoe. shoe. You know, you reach uh, in. Where, where, is there a, a story from your childhood? I'm going to take from the front of the shoe. I'm not going to okay. take, okay. take, from, take yeah. from the front of the shoe. See if it uh, a memory from your remember, life. Remember what happened your last Your childhood. Time? Christmas. Oh, here we go. I had this conversation with someone the other day, and people are not going to like this. Great. It's not my favorite holiday because it was, oh, it was always work for me. It was Why are you work. Santa? Yeah. I've been Santa more than once uh, for people, improbable p- places. Um, so when I was growing up in yeah. a small town, you, you don't buy a Christmas tree in Tipton. You go cut it down. Right, because so, you're surrounded by them. Yeah, by the time I'm in sixth grade, I have to go out with my dad and my brother and another family, go out on their farm. It's always snowing. Fuck, you're then, having trouble with timber. Yeah, then I have to go crawl under the fucking tree yeah. and saw it down. Mm-hmm. And then we had to take it out to my father's manufacturing plant, and then he trims it there. And it's a whole production. It takes the whole day. Wow. And then you gotta, you, then you got to put the lights in. And then the week before, I had to put all the lights out outside. So it was like, okay, you don't have any free time. So now, not only am I working every day after school, throughout grade school for my dad. Yeah. Now it's the weekend. Hey, what are we going to do? Let's go work. So I, just, I, have a, I have a really love-hate with Christmas. It's kind of like, oh, God. And you know what? To, to be honest, these days, there's no Christmas. It's a fucking, it's only a, a reason like, get me what I want. Where's my wish list? I want my stuff for Christmas. And that's not my kids demanding it, but that's everybody. What's the Christmas spirit, right? It is, it is, it's, it's an economic uh, necessity. If, if Christmas didn't exist, do you know how many businesses would go out of Night. All is. And by the way, those creepy. How about this? How about this? This the owner of the inn, right? The inn where where Jesus and uh, where where Mary and Joseph went. Wasn't it a stable? Well, this yeah, but they they went. It wasn't to the like inn. the red roof they inn, knocked, bro. They knocked on the door of the inn. We have no room for you on the in, in the inn. Oh yeah. There's a very pregnant woman there. Yeah. Where was the inn owner's wife? Wouldn't right. she go, hold up, hold up. She's sleeping with us. You're going to go sleep in the stable. Stable. Son. Yeah. Dad. Huh. They're going to make a pregnant woman go in a shed? Yeah. And then what happens? She has the baby, baby. And then three very creepy shepherds come around. And what's Joseph thinking? Yeah, who are who these the guys? Who the fuck are these guys, Mary? And they're bringing bling. Right. Hey, no, no, those are the, those are the wise men. Oh. The shepherds showed up that night. Oh. The, the wise men came 11 days later. That's the, that's the 12 days of Christmas. a lot of, of guys. That's the 12 days of Christmas. Do you know that? Well, I do now. It's the Christmas day, and then 11 days later is the Feast of the Epiphany when allegedly the three kings showed up. You know a lot about Christmas for a guy who hates Christmas. You got I am being of service to Christmas. But but what's Joseph thinking that night? First of all, first of all, it's not Joseph's kid. Yeah, and it's he knows, God's, right? Isn't it God's? Yeah. And Joseph knows like I've never slept with this gal. I'm just gonna take it on her word. And then what happens? Three dudes show up and they yeah. seem to know her. Doesn't Joseph kind of go, Hey Mary, so uh who are these guys? Yeah. They seem to know you. Yeah. And you know what this, the, the, those shepherds are going? Like, hey, uh, anybody going to eat that placenta? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Christmas. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's become such a, uh, 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 you know, a corporate holiday. It's, it's, you know, when they start fucking putting out the Christmas uh, stuff before Thanksgiving, it's just, I don't know, man. What would happen if you didn't give your kids gifts? I know I never would, but it's such a, you know, an expectation of I'm going to get a bunch of stuff. Do you want to just say bah humbug and get out of this? Bah. <laughs> Folks, we got to end it there with Scrooge. <laughs> and, uh, give them a plug, buddy. Where can they see your tour? David Keckner. 
David Koechner, comedian, yeah. author, on, uh, on author, writer, uh, 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 on on Instagram, David K O E C H N E R. Also on Facebook, I'm touring the rest of the year, all over the country, all over. Oh, go I'm see keep him, doing man. It. Boy, aren't we lucky? We are. I mean, in the fact that right now we're as a strike and that we have an extra skill set that we can go out and make money if we have to. That's been the beauty of stand-up. Because there was a strike years ago, and there's always ebbs and flows when you do what we do. So the the stand-up is a blessing. Thanks to all the fans for coming out and seeing us. Go see David Zachary Keckner. And uh, folks, till next time, chicken. Chow mein, baby. Yeah, baby. Come on, noodle. You want to go get some placenta? Yep. I got some in my pocket.